everyone. In this guide, we will follow the steps in the documentation to create and deploy an object detection AI project using Brain Builder for Atrios. This will include everything from preparing the datasets to evaluating and exporting the results, and finally, deploying them to a Raspberry Pi AI camera. Let's dive in. And now we're in Brain Builder, let's go ahead and create our project. We'll call this project Nuts and Bolts Project. For a detector model, Brain Builder recommends that we use a resolution of 2 to 5 megapixels. Objects should be larger than 12 by 12 and a 320 by 320 image. Include at least 500 total objects. Now keep in mind, this is not the number of images specifically. This is the number of objects. Our Brain Builder supports JPEG, PNG, and BMP. Try to minimize the background variations as much as possible. Focus on your images. And of course, try to use different lighting conditions. I think we're now ready to go ahead and start capturing our images. Then we'll use the GUI tool created by the Sony team to collect our images. It's a very useful tool. There are a lot of features, but today we'll just use the ability to capture images. Okay, let's go ahead and start capturing our images. And to do this, we'll create a new collection. Let's call this nuts and bolts. And then we'll click add. And to start capturing our images, we'll click on our collection and go to capture. What this will do is open the Raspberry Pi AI camera and show us a preview. Now you can see all the things we're going to use in this tutorial today. And what we'll do is collect about 100 images and we'll put these images in different positions. We'll try to space them out and we'll try to make the classes as even as possible. The GUI tool has this really great feature that allows us to use a timer. So let's say we want to capture 100 images. So we need a, a bit of time to switch our rotation. So we'll say 0 0.1. 0 0.1 is going to give us about 10 seconds per capture. Okay, let's get started. Now that we've captured our 100 images, we can just download them. And now let's create our data set. Let's call this nuts and bolts combined. And we are using the detector model. So we'll pick detector and then create data set. Now let's upload our nuts and bolt data. Okay, now that our data is uploaded, we can take a quick look through it to be sure that things are uploaded correctly and we have the data that we need. Okay, now let's start the process of annotating our data. Annotating is very easy in Brain Builder. We'll have three classes. Let's create our first class now. First class is half inch screw. Second class will be quarter inch screw. And our last class will be nut. And to annotate in Brain Builder, we be sure the annotate tool is selected and we will box this group and then we'll select half inch screw and then we'll select quarter inch screw and our last class will be nut ready to start training in a detector model you can customize your training duration and usually selecting a longer processing time will allow for more optimization that could result in a model better suited to your data sets we have the quick, balanced, and thorough options. A quick is more for quick prototyping, and thorough is more for production level environments. I think in our case though, we will stick with quick. Let's go ahead and get our training started. Now the training is complete. Okay, now that our training is complete, we can take a look at our validation set results we'll see average precision and average recall. Precision, also known as the false detection rate, shows us the proportion of correct predictions out of all predictions made by the AI is positive. A high value here indicates few false detections, while a low value suggests many false detections. Recall shows you the proportion of correct predictions out of all actual positive cases. If the value is high, it means there are fewer missed true positives. If the value is low, it means there are more missed true positives. Basically, 
Precision tries to answer the question of all the objects I detected, how many are correct, and Recall tries to answer the question, all the objects that exist, how many did I detect? Now, let's take a quick look through our data, see how things turned out, and you can see that from our training process, it's pretty good here. I have a pretty high confidence score for all items. I think we're ready here to move on to the next step. Now, let's take a look at one of the cool features of Brain Builder, which is changing the confidence threshold. So if you look back at our images here, back at the evaluation tab, you'll see that we have threshold settings that we can adjust. Uh, we have the confidence threshold, which is used as the threshold to filter out false positives and ensure that a predicted bounding box meets the threshold. We also have the intersection over union threshold. This threshold, the ratio used as a threshold for determining whether a predicted outcome is a true positive or a false positive. These will be values from 0.1 to 1. Confidence threshold, if you make it really high, you won't get any predictions. If you make it too low, you get too many predictions. And the, the IOU threshold uh, will help you determine if your bounding boxes are appearing where they should. So what we can do is take a look at one of our images here. And even though these look pretty good, if we say we want to adjust the thresholds, so let's say this one is 0.8, and we go all the way up to above 0.8, you'll see that we don't have any predictions. Uh, if we take this down some, uh, the screws are a confidence threshold of about 0.72. But I, I think that our result is fine. I think this is fine at 0.50, but if we decide that result doesn't work, we can always adjust it here. Uh, we also have the ability to uh, adjust these per class. So if only the nut confidence score we want to adjust, we can do that here. Keep in mind, when you make these adjustments, they do apply to the entire model, not just to one object pulled up. So now let's move on and do a little bit of testing. For you to test, you click on the testing option on the left hand side. Usually when you test, you want to use objects that are not part of your original upload. So what I will do is grab some images and they're all grouped together. So let's have a look to see how our model does with this new type of image. And honestly, the results look pretty good here. So you can see that this is the quarter inch screw and these are the half inch screws. And this is the nut and quarter inch screw half inch screws and that's pretty good even though these images were, were taken on a different camera uh, and truly really test things out here let's actually take some images that were a part of the upload grab a few so here are some images that were a part of our upload drag this onto the brain builder stage it still does a great job of finding the images you can also see that the conference scores are much higher i think this is a really great result i think we're now ready to move on to the next step Now we're ready to start the process of exporting the AI model or brain we created so we can transfer it to the Raspberry Pi AI camera. So now what we'll do is we'll click on download brain and then we'll choose a location. We want to save the output zip file. Brain Builder will convert and quantize the model to ensure compatibility with the IMX 500. We can then start preparing it using the IMX tools packager for the Raspberry Pi AI camera. Okay, we now have our data moved over to the Raspberry Pi. We're going to start the process of using the IMX Tools Packager, package this into a format that works on the Raspberry Pi AI camera, and then we'll push it to the Raspberry Pi. First thing we need to do, of course, is unzip our data. And inside of our main zip file, there will be another zip file that is named after our data set. We also want to unzip this as well. And what we're looking for here is our packerout.zip. And we're looking for our labels.txt file. And here they both are. And if we go to our documentation site, we'll see that we need to have the IMX 500 tools to be able to work with this program. Uh, we need the Raspberry Pi camera libraries. And we're also going to need the uh, Model Zoo repository. Now, the Model Zoo repository is just a sample to show you how to use the Raspberry Pi AI camera and how to push and how to receive results. So I've already installed all these tools and I have the Raspberry Pi uh model zoo repository installed on my computer okay now what we need to do is convert the packerout.zip to a network.rpk file and according to the documentation we will need this line to be able to do that so let's copy that line here then we'll go back to our raspberry pi and let's open a terminal inside of our project folder and we'll paste in that line and now if we go back to our folder we should see our network.rpk file.
Okay, now we're ready for our last step of pushing our model to the Raspberry Pi AI camera. Now, according to the documentation, we'll do this, the sample app from the model zoo with the network.rpk and the labels.txt file. Let's actually go back to the Pi first and let's copy our network.rpk and our labels.txt. And here I have the model zoo already downloaded and you'll go into the models, object detection, brain builder folder. Then we'll paste in the files that we have Download it and create it. And now we'll go back to the documentation, copy this line here, and then we'll start the process of pushing this to the Raspberry Pi AI camera. Let's open up a terminal here, paste in our line. This action will push the model we created to the Raspberry Pi AI camera. The advantage is that now the inferencing will happen on the camera instead of on the Raspberry Pi board, giving you the option to have a lower powered Pi, uh, for instance, even on a Pi Zero, it could also be very useful for remote use cases. Okay, and here we have our results on the Raspberry Pi AI camera. We are doing a pretty good job of detecting our individual items. And when it comes to using Brain Builder in this case, again, we built on Quick. But if you wanted to use this in a production level environment, of course, you would use Thorough. It uh, will take a little bit longer to build, but I, I think the output would be worth it. So just to recap, what we've done here is we've built our data set uh, using the GUI tool. We have uploaded our data set to Brain Builder. We annotated. Uh, we evaluated the results. We pushed it to the Pi, and we built it using the IMX500 tools. And now we're viewing the result on the Raspberry Pi AI camera. I hope this video helps anybody looking go to go through this same process. If you have any questions, Please let us know. Thank you.